Hey YouTube, happy 2023. It's a brand new year, so I thought I would take the time to go through how I plan to use TickTick uh, to start off this year. Last year I made a video going through how I used TickTick in 2022, and it was one of my more popular videos, so I thought I would go through and give an update uh, for this year. I rewatched that video in preparation for uh, making this video, and it's, it's funny to see how some things change and, and some things stay the same. And I think some things changed throughout last year, and I went back and changed them back to the way that they were originally. It's been interesting to see how my process has evolved over time. Hello, I'm Joshua Best. All right, so I've got my tick tick up here. And one of the first things you'll probably notice right away is that it's pretty minimalist. I've kind of taken away everything that is unnecessary at this point, and I'm basically using tick tick as strictly a task management tool, which it is. Um, but so you won't see any Eisenhower matrix, you won't see any habit trackers, nothing like that. So one of the things that I heard a long time ago, and I'm not sure if it's true or not, uh, regarding the Amish and how they feel about technology. It's not that they hate technology or they want to stay away from it altogether. It's rather that they're very thoughtful and very mindful and they take a long time in deciding whether or not a piece of technology is useful for them before they implement it. And that's kind of the approach that I've taken uh, with setting up my Tick Tick for 2023. Um, so over here on the left side, You'll see I have the tasks available, I have calendar, and I have search. And the only reason that I have calendar is because TickTick -Tick doesn't allow you to remove that. I'm not sure why TickTick -Tick made it so that you cannot remove the calendar, but in any case, it's there, but I won't be using it. All right, so moving on to how I have my tasks organized, you can see in this navigation pane, I only have lists, and I've broken those lists up into several folders, and those folders are areas of focus. And areas of focus is something I believe I got from the PARA method, P-A-R-A. -A. Um, if you're unfamiliar with the PARA method, you should go take a look. I'll leave a link in the uh, description. Uh, Tiago Forte. Uh, champions the para method for organizing your pretty much organizing your data across multiple platforms. I don't necessarily use the para method, but I've read about it and I've taken some ideas from it, one being the areas of focus and how I have this set up, and also one being that I have a major project up here as my first folder. And if I had two or three major projects, I would have those listed up here at the top as well. As it is right now, I only have one major project. And so that's listed here at the top. If I drill into this, you'll see that the first list is called general. So this is any general one-off tasks that I have for that particular major project. And so this is something that you'll see in my other folders as well. After that, I have some task lists that are related specifically to that project. And then down at the very bottom, I have a notes list. One of the things that I spent a lot of time thinking about last year was how to implement and use notes effectively. You know, I thought about, should I be using notes in TickTick? -Tick? Should I be using them in Obsidian? And I think I have a process in place now that works for me. And one of the ways I utilize notes now is that I have a notes list under each of my areas of focus, if I need to keep notes for that area of focus. All right, so I'm going to collapse that list and move on to work. So work is anything that is related to work but is unrelated to my major project. So you'll see again, I have a general list and this is general one-off tasks that I have that are work-related. Again, not related to my major project. And here again, I have a notes list. And so these are notes that are related to work in general, not related to my major project. And then down below that, I have a leadership notes list. And this is something new that I've added. I recently got a promotion at work where I'm in a bit more of a leadership position. 
and this will be my first leadership position, so I've been trying to gather bits of information so that I can hopefully be effective in that role. All right, collapsing work, moving on to family. Again, you'll see the general task list. These are one-off things that I need to do for either my family or the household or things related to those types of things. And then down below that I have chores, and these primarily are just regularly scheduled chores. You know, taking the trash bin out to the street on Wednesday, things like that. All right, collapsing family, moving on to online. So online is an area of focus for me. I have my YouTube channel. I have my newsletter that I send out monthly. And then I also have my blog that I work on. And these are just general task lists. You know, for example, YouTube has video ideas or videos that I plan to make in the future. Uh, the newsletter has newsletter ideas <laughs> and so forth. And so that's my online area of focus. You'll notice that there is no notes list in the online area of focus, same with family. I just haven't had the need to jot down some notes that I wanna keep uh, forever for those areas of focus. If something comes up, I would add a, uh, a notes list. All right, moving on to self, which is pretty much anything that doesn't belong in any other area of focus. So these are things like ideas that I have, um, just general tasks that I need to do for myself. I have a gift ideas list. These are things as the year goes by. If I see something that maybe my wife would like or maybe my kids would like for Christmas, uh, I just throw it into this gift ideas list um, so, that I, so that I can remember it. And then down below that, I have my notes list for myself. Again, just things I want to keep that don't belong in any other area of focus. And those are my five areas of focus. Again, in this navigation panel, you won't see any filters. You don't see any tags. I'm taking a very minimalist approach. I will use tags from time to time, but I don't normally navigate and sort my lists based on those tags. And primarily the tag that I do use most often is a waiting tag. So if a task is waiting for someone else, I just tag it with waiting that way. Um, I know that I'm waiting. All right, so we've talked a little bit about how I have Tick Tick organized. Let's just touch on how I plan to use it. Up at the top, I have Inbox, and I use this as an inbox. I generally try to keep it clean as much as possible, but I add things here, especially when I'm you know, out and about and I have my phone with me and something comes to mind. I just open up Tick Tick, put something in the inbox, whether it be a task or a note, I'll figure that out later. Uh, I'll just add it as a task to the inbox. And the other way I use the inbox is I use the email into TickTick -tick feature. Uh, that's a feature that I use quite heavily um, to forward emails into TickTick -tick, and they'll also show up here in the inbox. And then when I get time, I'll sit down and, and process my inbox and make sure that everything gets put in its right folder, uh, in the right task list. And if it needs a due date, I'll put the due date on at that time. All right, so the next list is the today view. And this is something I talked about in a recent video. So I am using due dates, but I use it as a DO date, otherwise known as the date I plan to work on it. So not necessarily the date that a task needs to be completed, but the date that I plan to work on it. And so these are the tasks that I have um, for today. These are things that I should be working on today. And then the other list that I have is the next seven days. So if I want to uh, look a little bit down the road, I just open up the next seven days. But that's pretty much it. I know it's a very minimalist approach to TickTick. -Tick. I know TickTick -Tick has a lot of features that I'm not currently using. And I may not stick with this forever, right? Um, you know, as things change and as TickTick -Tick comes out with their next update and they've got a, a shiny new feature that I need to try and see if I can put into my process. I'll probably do that. But for now, this is what I'm sticking with. Uh, I'm trying to keep it minimal. I'm trying to use it as a task management tool. Uh, I'm not using it as a habit tracker, although I do use the habit tracker from time to time. Uh, but to start this year, I've set up a more analog approach to tracking my habits, and I may make a video about that in the future. But that's it. So let me know in the comments what you think of this setup. 
And also, let me know in the comments which Tick Tick features you're using. Are you using the Eisenhower Matrix? What about the Pomodoro Timer or the calendar? Let me know. All right, thanks for watching. Have a good one.